My name is Billy Schoenberg and I'm here to talk to you about one of the coolest new features in Cella Architect 4.0. The ability to use generative AI to help you build models as well as understand models. Um, you can access this functionality through Window Open AI Assistant Panel. Those of you who are familiar with Stella might remember that in 3.8, we came out uh, with the functionality to build uh, CLDs um, using AI. Well, now we've brought that functionality to simulating models, as well as um, created something that we call Selden, a discussion bot um, that you can talk to um, about um, your model. So I'm gonna start in the build mode, um, and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna give it a simple prompt. Give me a model of reindeer, eating lichen. Okay, something very simple, very basic. What this is doing is, is it's going off and it's sending this request out to um, an LLM. In this case, um, we're using uh, Gemini 2.5 um, Flash. Um, if you go into uh, the assistant menu and you choose instead of quantitative, quantitative experimental, um, you're able to change which LLM um, you're talking to. But for those of you who just want to get work done, stick with the default uh, assistant. And uh, what the LLM is doing is it's uh, taking uh, its training and its context um, and it's dumping it into a format called SDJSON, um, which is then being returned to Stella um, and plotted here on the screen. So we can see here that it is built for us a model um, that has a, an amount of lichen with growth and consumption, a reindeer population. It's even able to generate graphical functions. It gives us a summary of the model um, that it's built, and it talks about how this model kind of fits into the limits to growth arc, uh, archetype. We can see here that there are three unit warnings, so the LLM is actually filling in all of the units. But if we look closely at these uh, three unit warnings, we can see that all of them um, are because um, we're not using a, uh, a dimensionless um, input into a graphical function technically a unit error, but uh, only in the strictest sense of the term. So if I uncheck use strict mode for units checking, those unit errors go away. Each one of the elements that has been created by the LLM is fully documented, um, including um, all of the connectors. I can then simulate this model and we can see here that we start with a large amount of lichen, which then gets uh, consumed. Um, the reindeer population grows and then stabilizes. So now we can start talking um, to Selden about this model. So you'll notice that I ran the model um, using LLM. That's uh, using LTM. That's really important um, because Selden is hooked into the loops that matter analysis uh, that's being done um, inside of Stella. And that's what gives Selden um, so much of its ability um, to describe your model for you and to answer questions about this model. So I'm gonna put down a table and in the table, I'm gonna put um, the lichen, the reindeer population, and I'm gonna put um, all of the flows, how um, the lichen changes and how the reindeer births and deaths change the reindeer population. I'm gonna select all the cells, right click copy, and I'm gonna change from build mode to discuss mode so that I can interact with Selden to start asking the LLM questions about this model. I'm gonna open up the assistant specific inputs and you're gonna see the problem statement, the background knowledge that I've skipped. Um, and I'm just gonna dump in a behavioral description, which is that copy and pasted table. I'm then gonna ask Selden, um, why um, does uh, the amount of lichen, let me spell that right, uh, decline initially, um, but then steady out? And what uh, Selden is gonna do now is, it's gonna use that loops that matter analysis that we ran when we ran the model, plus the behavior um, that uh, we've given it from that table, plus a full description of the model structure, um, including every equation, um, all of the documentation, and it's gonna turn around and it's gonna spit out a response to, for you that helps you understand why this model, what it does, what it does. Um, so it talks about uh, the initial state and the imbalance at time one. Um, we start um, with a certain amount of uh, reindeer um, and lichen, and we can check the veracity of those arguments. If we go to the lichen amount and we go to properties, um, we see the 10,000 kilograms. And if we go to um, reindeer population, we will see 100 reindeer. 
Um, so then we look at the flows that affect um, the lichen amount, the lichen growth. It gives us the equation for it. Um, and it actually substitutes all the numbers um, so that we can see um, that uh, we're actually consuming more lichen um, than, uh, than is growing. So at the start, lichen growth is significantly less than lichen consumption. This um, imbalance immediately leads to a net outflow from the lichen amount stock, causing its initial decline. It then talks about the reinforcing loop R2 for lichen growth. Um, and if we uh, flip back into um, LTM and we go to the loops and we look at R2 and we highlight it on the screen, we can see that R2 is the loop that goes lichen amount, lichen growth, lichen amount. Um, if we had spent the time and actually uh, created a name um, for this loop using the loop score variable function here, um, Selden would have used that name for this loop as opposed to the kind of cryptic R2. It then talks about uh, what this loop is um, and what each of the other loops are. It then talks about where the stabilization happens. Um, so we can see that um, is dominant, causing the reindeer population to increase rapidly. This rapid increase leads to high lichen consumption, driving the initial decline in lichen amount. However, as the lichen amount drops, the balancing loops B1, B5, and B6 become increasingly active and eventually dominant. If we select that, um, we can see initially, let's zoom in here, uh, let's select all those loops. We can see that uh, that uh, R1 loop was dominant, but then um, we see that uh, the balancing loops, as it identifies, um, are, uh, are the dominant ones. Flipping back in, so these uh, combined items reduce the lichen consumption rate um, by directly limiting consumption or reducing um, the reindeer population. Um, in summary, the initial decline of lichen is due to initial imbalance where consumption outstrips the growth. The subsequent stabilization is a result of strong negative feedback loops, B1, 5, and 6, that kick in as lichen becomes scarcer. These loops reduce the reindeer population and or their consumption rate, allowing lichen to reach a newer, lower, but sustainable equilibrium with the reindeer population. Pretty neat. So now we can turn around and we can start asking Selden questions about uh, the validity of this model. Um, what do you suggest I do to improve this model and make it more realistic? Um, and again, um, Selden has access uh, to uh, the stock and flow structure, the equations, the documentation. Um, it has access uh, to the behavior that we've given it um, and is therefore able um, to come up with suggestions for you about things you might want to do um, to improve the model. And one of the really neat things um, about Selden is um, the content that it generates, um, you can actually copy and paste and put back into the build mode API to actually incrementally build this model. Um, so it talks about how the results show an initial overshoot and collapse followed by a dampened oscillation that uh, settles into a relatively stable equilibrium. To make this more, uh, model more realistic, we should consider adding more detail to the biological processes, particularly focusing on delays and more nuanced nonlinear relationships. So it says, introduce delays in reindeer population dynamics. Currently, reindeer births are instantaneous. In reality, there's a significant gestation period. Adding this delay can introduce more realistic oscillations and overshoots as the population response to food availability won't be immediate. It then gives us an exact set of instructions um, for how to build that structure in. Um, consider um, a maturity delay. Um, you can disaggregate reindeer population into age cohorts. Um, we can refine food impact and reindeer dynamics. Um, it talks about uh, how to do that. Uh, model um, overgrazing, impact on lichen regeneration. Um, so right now, lichen growth is only limited by its carrying capacity. However, severe overgrazing can damage the lichen bed. Here's how you would uh, take that into account, on and on and on. So why don't we take um, one of the first suggestions, um, introduce delays in reindeer population dynamics, and we'll right click copy that, and we'll come back um, to the build mode AI, and we will just paste that straight in. Um, and we'll say, please introduce delays in reindeer population dynamics. We hit submit. And now I expect um, that the LLM will go ahead um, and turn the reindeer population stock 
um, into a little bit um, of an aging chain. And we'll see together um, what it does. Because one of the important things um, to understand about uh, LLMs is that they are not deterministic. Um, this is a stochastic modeling process um, where each time you make a request to the LLM, you're going to get slightly different or sometimes very different uh, responses. Um, this is all powered by the um, SDAI open source project, um, which we've been um, at IC Systems a major uh, contributor to. So we can see here, uh, it introduced uh, food perception uh, delay um, as opposed to um, delays um, in uh, the um, reindeer population. So it added um, a connection from lichen amount to lichen per reindeer for reindeer population to lichen per reindeer, um, lichen per reindeer to perceived, um, on and on. Um, and if we simulate this, we see that it hasn't really changed behavior um, all that much. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to undo uh, those changes using Control Z to undo. And I'm going to reprompt um, this model. I'm going to say um, um, introduce a um, second stock of um, young reindeer. So you can see here that one of the things that you can do um, to get better results um, with, uh, with modeling using AI is to be very specific and to break your problem up into smaller and smaller chunks, just like you do when you're modeling um, by hand as a human. Um, you know, you don't try and build the whole model in one shot. You go stock or concept by concept. So in this case, I expect um, that uh, we will get our um, young reindeer um, population um, attached to um, the, uh, the reindeer population. Sometimes it may take a little bit of time um, for the LLM to respond. Um, these are using um, publicly available LLMs. Um, for instance, uh, we're using Gemini 2.5 Flash Preview. These aren't um, special LLMs that IC Systems has trained or developed. Um, this is all off the shelf uh, kind of commercial uh, grade, uh, grade things. So we can see here now that um, we do have um, our um, rain, uh, young reindeer, but we can see um, that the reindeer births um, weren't actually moved into young reindeer. They're still sitting there um, in the reindeer population. So let's just bolt those in um, over here now, and we can see that we have our aging chain. Um, we can also see that uh, the diagram generation, um, while usable, I'll call it, isn't necessarily perfect, um, but we can spend um, a little bit of time uh, to make uh, the diagrams better. Um, we can now run this model and we can see, again, um, the differences in behavior. We can then go ahead and go back to Selden and uh, what we'll do is um, we will delete this table and I'll create a new table where I'm going to go to the properties and I'm going to add um, every stock and every flow um, to the table using uh, the shift key. And I will then copy this, come to Selden and um, replace the behavioral description. Uh, hold on, right click, copy, right click, paste. And I'm going to ask it to give me a feedback narrative for behavior. You know, I want it to explain to me um, at each and every point in time what the dominant uh, feedback loops are and why this model is doing what it is doing. So Selden's going to go off. It's going to use this new LTM analysis that we've just created by rerunning this model. It's going to use um, the new um, behavioral description that we gave it from the new table. And it's going to use uh, the updated uh, model structure um, that we see here. And when we look at uh, the results now, we can see um, how it breaks the model up into different time stages um, and talks about which loops um, are important um, at each and every um, point in time. 
Um, I'll leave that uh, for, for you all um, to, to pause the video and read. The final thing I'd like to leave you with is that uh, built into Stella is the ability to detect the amount of AI being used um, to create your model. So if you go into model detect AI usage, you'll see here that this entire model was created by AI, touched by AI, and was never touched by a human. Um, if I had actually gone ahead and gone into the birth rate, and uh, taken that variable and changed the equation from 0 0.2 to let's say 0 0.25, if I do a uh, model detect AI usage, we can now see that birth rate was originally created by AI, but has been touched by a human and has also been touched by an AI. Um, this will let uh, educators um, keep tabs on essentially what portion um, of uh, students' work has actually um, been done or uh, considered um, by, uh, by the student. So that's uh, an example um, of uh, some of the AI capabilities that exist in Stella Architect 4.0. Um, and the final thing I want to leave you with is this SDAI project, which is the open source project that um, underlies um, all of these AI features um, inside of uh, Stella. Thank you.